Hello and welcome to this short video debrief of the 2021 budget. In this video, we'll be looking at changes to VAT. In addition, we will be considering other significant changes that have happened in the VAT arena in the past couple of months. Starting off with the announcements that were made yesterday, either within the actual budget speech made by Rishi Sunak or found in the supporting policy papers, Sean, please could you just give a quick overview of the first of these announcements. Thanks, Nigel. To be honest, there really wasn't too much that came out of yesterday that was new or surprising that was VAT related. The biggest announcement was the extension of the support already in existence to help the hospitality industry, including holiday accommodation, attractions, etc. On the 8th of July 2020, a reduced rate of VAT of 5% was announced to take effect from the 15th of July 2020 through to the 12th of January this year. The closing date was then subsequently extended to 31st of March. Yesterday, a further extension of this 5% rate was announced, taking us through to the 30th of September 21. Beyond that, we will see a new VAT rate come into existence for the hospitality industry of 12.5% for just six months from October 21 to March next year. Although the 5% VAT rate was clearly welcomed when it came in, how much benefit has really been is up for debate given many of the businesses who are able to benefit had to close totally for months. The output VAT on nil sales is always going to be nil, whether VAT is collected at 5%, 12.5%, 20%, or let's say 100%. Thanks, Sean. It sounds like there could be potential VAT planning points that might be considered, considered given the variety of rates that are coming in. Yes, you're right, Nigel. The key is using the tax point rules to their best advantage for your situation. Each business in the hospitality sector will be different, so people will need specific advice tailored to their own circumstance. Okay, thanks, Sean. Mike, was that the only announcement that related to that yesterday? Uh, it wasn't, Nigel, no, but um, most of the other stuff that they announced was kind of just confirming things that had already been trailed in the past and uh, firming up on some of the detail, really. Um, first one, was to do with the deferred VAT that people were given back at the beginning of the uh, coronavirus uh, situation. So we're talking from 20th of March, 2020 through to 30th of June, 2020. Anybody who had a VAT payment to make in that period was allowed, if they wanted to, to not pay it over. They keep the cash yeah. in their business and use it as working capital, pay staff, whatever. Fortunately, it was only a deferment and now it comes the time they've got to pay it back. Now, clearly they thought we might be out of the situation by now. We aren't, so it's still going to cause a bit of pain for some people. But they have announced they're allowed to uh, spread the payment over a period. Mm -hmm. Now, the way this is going to work is that clients need to access via their government gateway account uh, a portal that will allow them to set up a payment plan to cover their, their own back liability for that period. Now, they've got until the end of June to register but it, the sooner they do it the better because the end period for the payments to be made by is fixed so the last repayment needs to be made by February 2022. Okay. So should uh, Lambert Chapman get involved with this? Unfortunately not um, the way they've done it in, in much the same way when they introduced the furlough scheme they did it in such a way that the client themselves or the business needs to get the re initial registration via their own login. With the furlough scheme, obviously, once that service was set up, we could then help make the claims. With this one, it's basically a one-off process. So once they go in and say, yeah, I want a payment plan for this, they can do that. And then at that point in time, they can set up the direct debit and also set over what period they want to make the payments because they can do it 
up to a maximum of 11 installments, but they, they could do it over two or three if they wanted. It all depends on the individual circumstance. Okay, thanks very much, Mike. That was very useful. Um, Sean, what else came out that was that related yesterday? Well, the VAT registration threshold, which has been at 85,000 for a couple of years already, will remain at level to at least March 24. Depending on how quick the UK economy comes out of lockdown, back up to pre-COVID levels, and also how inflation might move, this will start to catch up fledgling businesses. On a more, more administrative front, MTD, or Making Tax Digital, for VAT was introduced back in April 2019. This required businesses to have a digital link between their accounting data and the VAT return submitted to HMRC. At the time, there were several classes of VAT registered businesses which were exempt for operating MTD, such as VAT groups, which are now actually required, and also voluntary VAT registrations, where turnover was under the 85,000 threshold. From April 22, these voluntary registered businesses must also be filing VAT returns digitally. This may also, this may see a decline in VAT registrations at that level of turnover, as compliance costs could start to outweigh the benefits of reclaiming input tax. Finally, there is to be an overhaul in the way VAT penalties and surcharges are calculated and charged. These new systems are coming in from 1st of April 22 and will impact where businesses pay their VAT liability late, file VAT returns late, or indeed not at all. Hopefully we'll be able to continue to support our clients so they don't have to worry about these. Okay, thanks, Sean. So overall, really, nothing too major was brought in for VAT registered businesses in. Well, to be honest, Nigel, I think with all the changes that have happened for businesses in the very recent past, it's the least Mr. Shunak could have done yesterday because obviously with the changes that have happened from 1st of January and from 1st of March, businesses have got enough to cope with, coping with the changes that have been brought in. Good point, Mike. I think therefore those changes that have recently come in and weren't announced in the budget need their separate little video. So um, let's do one on that and we'll leave you with our thoughts on the VAT change in the budget there. Thank you.